Hello, everyone. Help me to welcome the author of The Untold Secret, Mr. Douglas E. Hobson. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Happy Saturday, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you might be. My name is Marva B. I am the CEO and founder of Black Link Magazine, and this is the Black Link Experience, and I am your host. We would like to welcome Mr. Douglas Hobson. He is the author of Untold Secrets, and I'm, I can't wait to get into this conversation. Thank you, Douglas, for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Ms. Marva B., for having me on your, your, your great platform. Thank you, Black Link Magazine. Uh, I'm happy to be here and I'm honored. Well, it's an honor to have you. So um, let's just get right into this interview. Um, okay. I, I want you guys to know the book is available on Amazon. We will have all the links in the bottom of this interview and everywhere Black Link Magazine is, our website, everywhere. You got to get the book. You got to read it for yourself. So let's get started. Douglas, first of all, I commend you to the core for speaking about your past. And, Thank you. you know, it has to be talked about, it's necessary. And so thank you, and, and especially being a man. And I had a live not too long ago about this, that men just will not talk about things that have maybe happened in their past or things that make them maybe feel a little weaker because they're the protectors, they're the men, and they're supposed to be strong, right? But what I think is that when you don't talk about it, it's a burden and it causes issues until it is released. And, yeah. and how you release that is you talk about it. So let me just allow you to speak. I want you to start from what inspired the book. Of course, I know it's your life, but let's talk about the beginning of this. Okay, well, I want to pick it back off of what you said real quick. Men don't talk about it because of the stigma um, that you will become homosexual if you were ever molested. Um, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions of people telling their story. Um, and the reason why I told my story, um, it's not about Douglas. It's not about me. It is about me, my story, helping other men and women come out of this silent epidemic of child abuse and child molestation. Uh, it is not talked about. It is not in the open forefront. The churches don't talk about it. And it's where there's supposed to be a hospital for this, this type of thing. And I want to be able to bless others, not to not to stay victims, but become victorious and, and better leaders of today. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, going 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 to how this all started, the inspiration was seeing men hurt. Uh, I was not a good husband. I was not a good father. I was not a good grandfather. I was not a good leader. And when I decided to tell my truth, things began to happen. Things began to open up. Uh, I felt a release uh, in my spirit. And then I became, I began to further my knowledge. And, and, and me going through it was the best teacher, but also furthering my education on childhood trauma, the causes of childhood trauma. What, what different types of trauma are there? There are 20 different types of trauma or more that we don't talk about. So this book, The Untold Secret, um, is, my, is my truth. It's my truth. And I, I tried to write it in a therapeutic way. So not only did you get the trauma, you got triumphant, and you got some real meaty information to help you along your journey. This book was not just something I threw together. I wrote the book in seven days. I, I locked, I locked my, listen, I locked myself in a hotel room and I asked, and, and, I, and I don't mean to be very religious, but I asked God to take me back to that very place wow. because I wanted to be very specific in what happened and what went on. Because again, nobody really talks about this. And I wanted my life experience to be a blessing to somebody else. And this book is blessing the nation right now. I mean, we had, I, I have testimonies in my inbox of men, women, children, grown women that are 30 and 40 and 50 years old saying, hey, I was molested, but I never told anybody. I never told someone right. until now. 
So, you know, my book is doing doing what I, I we want it to do, and that is to bless other people, to, to allow them. And, and, and child abuse is a silent epidemic. Uh, we just released a promo video. It, it is a silent epidemic that is killing people every day. And we want to bring this to the forefront. We want to be the face of the victors in child abuse. And I believe that's what this book is going to do. I believe so. And Mike, thank you for joining us. I don't know if you just want to listen or come on, but thank you for being here. Okay, so here we go. First of all, you're right. It's the stigma. And that's why they won't talk about it. Um, and it's unfortunate. But what I feel like from you is by you telling it and by us putting it out here to the world that hopefully someone will grasp a hold of that and know that it's okay. It's okay to tell your story. Yes, ma'am. So also you said um, you asked God to allow you to go back to the place where you are. And so everything we do, we put God first. So don't think you're being too religious. We got to have God. So I appreciate that. But what I want to know from you is when you got in that place for seven days, I don't know who wrote a book in seven days, but (laughs) kudos to you because it took me a year. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. But anyway, when you went back to that place and he allowed you to actually go right back to the beginning of when it happened to you. How did it make you feel like, what were the emotions through that? It was very emotional. Um, It was to the point where I had to check myself into a psychiatric hospital after I wrote the book because it was so traumatic. Um, I literally, and and, and I'll explain to you exactly how it happened. I locked myself, I was in the Radisson Hotel. I said, I need the room for seven days. I went in there, I prayed, I showered, I prayed, and I sat in the middle of the floor in the living room area. And I said, God, take my spirit back to January 7th, 1980, when I was born. Take me back to the very time, the very place, the very date of when the first abuse happened. And what happened was I literally felt my spirit leave my body and I, I could see myself in a child form in that space. Oh my God. And I literally, my, my, my adult self and my child self, it was like a shadow of me looking at myself as a child. And I could see everything. And as I'm seeing this, I'm writing. And literally for seven days, I took a break, maybe four hours. I slept, got back up and redid it again. And I literally... I wrote, and it was like almost I was in a trance almost, how I was writing. And I told Mike the other day, I said, this book went through one edit. It went through one edit. And I was writing, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. Till the the eighth day, I checked out of the hotel, and I was so overwhelmed. I had to check myself into the hospital because I felt suicidal. I felt anger. I felt depressed. All of these different emotions came, and it was not until after I wrote the book on the eighth day, and if we know anything about God, on the eighth day, he rested. Yes. So the seventh day was the most impactful day, but the eighth day, I felt, when I came back to myself, I felt so much lighter, Mm -hmm. and I was, I had a release to where, oh my God, now I can be the man I need to be. Because this 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 thing held so held me captive for forty years. Yeah, it held y'all 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 hear what I'm telling you. It held me captive for well, thirty five years. It held me captive for thirty five years because I was too afraid to deal with with all of the emotions I had inside of me from the anger to the frustration to hating women, hating men, because I was not only molested by a woman, I was molested by a man. Mistreating relationships, sabotaging relationships, all because Douglas did not want to deal with Douglas. Douglas wanted to blame everybody else doing everybody else's wrong until one day a light bulb went off in my head and said, if you deal with Douglas, and this is what God told me. He said, if you deal with you, I'll take your mess, turn it into a miracle, and bless the nation with it. 
And I did not want that. I said, no, Lord, I don't want to be the focal point. And God said, it's not about you. Mm. I ordained, listen, he said, there are things that I have ordained from you for the foundations of the world that I cannot give you because you have not taken the proper step to become who you were supposed to become. You, I, I was living in the facade of who Douglas was because guess what? Because I was not happy with me, I had aliases. Mm. And those aliases were my alter egos to cover up who Douglas really was. So when I got to a point where God says, hey, if you do this, I can promise you this because it already belonged to you from the foundation. But now I can take what I, what I was supposed to give you here I can take it and bless you with it here, and then there's there's no sorrow, there's no consequence for what I'm getting ready to bless you with. Woo. So, woo. Woo. Yeah. Douglas, yeah. wow. Okay, my birthday <laughs> January sixth, by the way. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Capricorn. Okay. Yes, Capricorn. Yes. Okay. You talked about um, all these emotions that are that rose up in you, and mm -hmm. how it just was so heavy that you had to check into. Um, a psych ward, yes. you know, and so here's my question mm -hmm. as a child, you don't get the option to check into a psych ward. And when you're trying, and what's so hard about that is when you're trying to tell people that are in authority and over you and that are adults and they don't listen to you, Ooh. you know. You don't, you, don't talk, you, don't, you don't want to talk about that. You don't, you don't want to talk get about a chance that. chance to, to make a decision because you're the kid. Let's talk about that part. L listen, I was admitted. There, there's a hospital in Elizabeth, New Jersey called the Elizabeth General Center. I was admitted 46 times because I was trying mm. to run. I, I ran away trying to stay safe. Right. So what I did, I lied and said I wanted to commit suicide and try to tell them what was going on. And, and when you read the book, when you read the entire book, I stayed in that hospital because I was trying to tell what was going on. Nobody believed me. They labeled me as a bad kid. And what I've learned as a trauma expert, what I have learned is this. When a child is acting out in school, when they're acting out in their community as myself, because I will go into school and, and, and beat kids up just because they were standing in the hallway. Yep. Um, how they really found out that I was being abused, I was being defiant to my teacher. But when a child is acting out in school, they're acting out in the community, we, we, we as the new society, we label them as a, a bad kid. They have ADHD, they have ADD, they're, they're, they're bipolar, manic depression, yep. they're, they, they're schizophrenic. What happened to what's going on at home right. that's causing this child to act out in school? Either that child's being beat, that child's being molested, that child is being neglected, they're being malnourished, they don't have adequate housing. There's something going on in that child's life at home that they're getting attention in school, but they're getting the wrong attention. Yeah. They're acting out because that's the only outlet that they have to be able to tell what's going on. And, and we're, we, are, we are so inclined with the pharmaceutical companies because w without ADD kids, without ADHD kids, the pharmaceutical companies have, have, have no leeway. That's it. So, 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 so we medicate children without first finding out what's wrong. Yeah. You know, I was medicated. I talk about this in my book. I had 12 of the top psychologists in America. Listen to what I'm saying. 12 of the top psychiatrists in the United States of America come to Elizabeth General Medical Center and sit with me. And all 12 of them diagnosed me with different things. You make me cry. They, they diagnosed me with different things. One diagnosed me schizophrenic. One diagnosed me with bipolar. One diagnosed me with manic depression. Uh, one diagnosed me with split personality disorder. All because they did not really want to hear that I was being chained to rails. I was being beat for no reason at all. I was I, I was locked in the closets. I, I was I was molested by an uncle. I was being beat by my mother. I was being locked in closets, chained to rails. I was not being fed, 
And the only way they found out is me going to school one morning and me being defiant and telling my teacher I would not sit down because it hurt. And they took me into the office and the principal said, Douglas, your teachers asked you to sit down four or five times. I said, I can't, it hurts. And when they lifted up my shirt, my skin was broken off of my back because of the beating that I took before. And my bottom was hurting because I was penetrated by an uncle the night before. So these are the things, this silent epidemic of child abuse and child, this silent epidemic is going on every day. Uh, I just released a new promo video. Every 10 seconds, there is a reported case of child abuse in America. Every 10 seconds. So, Ms. Marvel, we've been on here for 13 minutes. Every 10 seconds of that 13 minutes, there has been a report of child abuse in America. There's a child being beat. There's a child being molested. Every 10 seconds. Here's my thing. I'm going to get myself together. Here's my thing. The, The cliche, hurt people hurt people. You were hurt. You were going in fighting and beating people up because you were hurt. The people that are hurting you, something was going on with them. And what I always say is that whatever goes on in our childhood, if it's not taken care of, if it's not um, paid attention to and getting the right help for it, it trickles over into your adulthood. And then now you're doing crazy things, beating your wife up, or maybe you turn into the molester. No, I'm not saying you. These are different scenarios that can happen. And so it's necessary to get this story out. And this story has to be a movie somehow. I, 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 I'm get, I, I, well, I'm glad you said that. It, mm-hmm. it has already been adapted. Um, it is being, uh, and, and Mike, I, I hope I can release this. Um, it's already been adapted by two-time Academy Award winner, Willie D. Burton, mm-hmm. who has worked on Roots. Uh, he's worked with Oprah. Yes. Um, he did, actually he won an Academy Award for Dream Girls. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So Willie D. Burton and Miss Doris Douglas have already I, adapted. I, I interviewed them. I love them. Th- th- those are my producers. Oh. Actually, my script. My script is complete. Uh, we have our final script meeting tomorrow uh, to go into the big screen. I think they. This is you. I yes, think- the untold secret. Yes, ma'am. I'm coming wherever y'all. I'm coming. <laughs> Those are my friends. They're my new. Yes. They're my new friends. And yes, oh ma'am. my god. Okay, let let me get back on track. Yes, First ma'am. of all, I'm sorry. I am. I have a heart, and I don't care if it was 45 years ago, a year ago, a day ago. It hurts me to know that you were hurt. That anybody is hurt as a child. Children do not have control over people violating them no matter what. And so we have to listen to our children. And that was the problem. And what is so bad about your situation? The person that gave birth to you. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like I, like your mother is the person that like, if you cut your finger or stuff your toe, I want my mama, my mama, mom. That's the first thing out of people, you know, kids' mouth. I can't imagine a mother. So take me back. Was there something going on? And I don't want to give the whole book away, but was it something going on with your mother in her life that you found out now that caused this to happen? Well, recently, okay, so I'm going to try not to cry. Recently, my wife and I, uh, we took a trip back to where I was born. Um, My grandmother, I call her big mama in my book. She's, She's gone on to be with the Lord. Um, we went back to the very place and I I have pictures. Um, I went back to my grandmother's house, uh, where some of the abuse took place. I went back to, uh, my actual address, the apartment where all of the, the majority of the abuse took place and all of my running away took place. And I went back to get closure. I had not been back there in 35 years. I went back to get closure. And during doing research, talking to different family members, I found out that my mother was touched by an uncle. And not not only that, I look, and and, and I hope this helps some people that that want to understand why people do what they do, especially mothers. I look like my biological father. I'm a splitting image 
of my biological father. My mother was with my biological father for over 10 years with no chance of marriage. Actually, my biological, from, from what I was told, my biological father tried to have my, make my mother have an abortion. Um, she, he actually pushed her through a glass window and tried to cut her stomach so she would bleed to death. Oh, my God. So, so I was not supposed to be here, according to my biological father. And I believe that my father hated my father. My mother hated my father. Yeah. And the splitting image of you having to look at me every day reminded her of the traumatic abuse that happened to her with my father. And then not knowing how to deal with that. So she took it out on me because I'm a splitting image of my father. And my mother's still alive to this day. I know where she is. And and. and People think I'm crazy when I say this. Even though the abuse happened, I would still go to the rescue of my mom. You know, she she was she was she was just in the hospital not too long ago with COVID and uh, pneumonia on a respirator. And I got the, I got the phone call, and the old Douglas would have said, "Lord, killer." Because yeah. I was angry. The new Douglas said, Lord, don't take her life. Allow her to live so she can get her life right with you. For Douglas to be able to say that, Douglas has matured. It's God. Douglas has forgiven. It's because God. I understand that parents, just because you have a child, don't make you a parent. That's right. That's right. And she may not have had the adequate mentors, I would say, to teach her how to be a mother. So I understand the, the importance of parenthood. I understand the importance of dealing with things early so they don't trickle into your now season. Yes. But at the same time, we all are human. We all make mistakes. We, uh, we Listen, I make mistakes every day. And I'm a husband now. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I make mistakes every day. Yes, we do. But the thing is, we don't wallow in our mistakes. We don't allow past situations to dictate where we're going now. Yeah. And I think this book is a prime example of taking something that should have took me out. I should have been in an insane asylum right now. Yeah. I, there's no way in. People tell me all the time, Douglas, I don't see how you have your right mind. Right. But this, this helped me. You got it keep out. Keep my right mind. You got it out. It was, it was therapy for me. Yes. You know, Marva, I, I'm 40 years old. I don't have no keys with me. I'm 40 years old. And just three years ago, I finally overcame my fear of hearing keys jingle. I, I, I would keep one key because I didn't want to hear the keys jingling. And somebody says, well, what, what's, what's the significance yes. of keys? Right. I knew when I heard those keys, mm -hmm. my mother was coming in the house. Mm -hmm. So I had to try to hide to not be beat. So just three years ago, oh, so I got over it. Whenever you heard the keys coming and you tried to hide, like at what age? Because some people will say, let, let me back up. Some people will say, because you said you got this happened to you through a teen up to a teenage teenager. But some people would say at some point. Because I know at 12 and 13, my kid would could, if he was that kind of kid, could just run away and get away. At what point were you able to not have to go hide, but able to get out of it? That was at the age of... Seventeen? Really? Mm. See, so people wouldn't think that 16, 17, you become, you're stepping into a young manhood 
and people don't don't ex wouldn't expect for you to stay stick around that long. Tell me why you why not. I had no choice. I understand, but for me, tell tell them why. I had no choice. I had no choice but to stick around. This is the thing. The vision, the fam, the vision of you from family services actually took me away from my mother. They put me in a residential placement up in Allentown, Pennsylvania, called Kids Peace. Okay. My mother was such a great manipulator. Right. That's where I learned it from. Right. Uh, manipulation trickled over to my department of the uh, Department of Social Services caseworker where they became friends and drinking buddies. Okay? So, throughout throughout the process, they will always send me back because my mother will always say, oh, he's just a bad kid. He's lying. He doesn't want to be at home. So, I, I went to re what they call respite care. Yeah. I went to, and, and we'll talk about the incident in the foster system later. Yeah. So, I went to respite care, I went to foster homes, and they always would send me back. And the, the threat was made that if I if if I told that the abuse was going to continue, that she would actually kill me and tell them I ran away. So I was in a catch-22. As a child, and, and, and we have to remember as a child, this is your mother. Yeah. This is some this you know do, do I do I take the chance of running away or do I take the chance if I run away they're going to bring me back cuz that 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 was that was the cycle right it, or it, if I stay and 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 continue to get beat and I tell somebody I run the risk <laughs> of me actually being killed so how what do I do I can still lie and say, hey, I want to commit suicide. I'm hearing voices. And I can go to Elizabeth General Medical Center, but they can only keep me for up to eight to nine days. Yeah. Yeah. So I go, I go out on the 10th day, and on the 11th day, I'm right back again, and nobody understood the cycle. And, 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 and I really wanted to expose the Division of Youth and Family Services in my second book. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, that there are ongoing investigations of the Division of Youth and Family Services selling kids to foster parents who are known abusers. Oh now, 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 Ms. Marvin, if, if, when, when you get a chance, when you go back, I know you said you read some, and you go back and read, uh, I believe it's in chapter five or chapter six of my book, I was also molested by a foster family. So these are things that are not brought to the light because of the cover-up and people don't want to believe these things. But these things happen every day in the foster system, in respite care, and things of that nature. They happen at, at camps. And people give hush money and nobody brings it to the forefront. And when you say hush, you know, that's just like um, as as in our culture growing up, things that happen in our home as kids are told, you don't go outside. This what's behind this door stays. And you have to do that because you're a kid. And so my mom and daddy told me I better not say. So I'm not saying no matter what. And that, and that is the most dangerous cliche detrimental, ever. Detrimental to people's health. People's because life. guess what? If I if I, I kept what happened to me behind closed doors and nobody believed it. That is the most that is the most dangerous cliche ever. What happens in this house stays in this house. Well, what happens if I'm getting molested every day and every night and I'm getting beat and I'm going to school with having to wear a foundation to cover up scars on my face? What happens then? Oh my gosh. Kids think that I'm homosexual because I got on makeup. And then you go into the essence of, if that's the case, then you go into the essence of being bullied. Yes, yes. Or because of your bullied. sexual orientation. Yes, yes. So so it's a cycle. And, and, and I believe that the Untold Secret and Douglas E. Hobson and Mike Waller and, and my, my, my greatest publicist of them all, Mrs. Jackie Bush, I think we're getting ready 
to set the mark Go. of talking about something that is so detriment to our society. Listen, this is so, it's so relevant. It's so relevant. And the fact of the matter is, while we have foster cares and we have foster parents and all that stuff, they're getting away with what they're doing to kids. And the thing about it is exactly what you're saying, Douglas. No one believes the kid. They just want to call the kids bad. And I know, for example, a, a, a young man that went to school, got in trouble, wouldn't do work and because he was being beat at home. So you can't tell me. And not only and all these emotions, mental health, your just your health in general, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Yes, ma'am. It's being, oh my gosh, I'm I'm just, I don't know, I'm at a loss. But what I do know and what I feel is that this is it is relevant and it has to be talked about. I don't care yes. who don't want to hear it, you gotta listen. Because yes. how many kids need to be saved right now that don't have a voice? You know what's funny? They don't listen until it hits home. Until it hits home. And, and there are people like myself that, that teach parents warning signs. I, I You know, I, I go around the country teaching classes, showing teachers, like my wife is a school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, their, their school system is trying to adapt my book into their curriculum to teach teachers how not to just label a kid bad, but try to find out and investigate what's going on at home. Yeah. Uh, you know, so th th this, oh gosh, if, if, if statistically, statistically, molesters are not people that are strangers. Molesters are people that the children are comfortable with. Aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters, babysitters, pastors. It's not a stranger. It's someone who has easy access to the children. Absolutely. And we let our kids go play at Bobby Joe's house. We go let our kids go over here. I don't know Bobby Joe's daddy. I don't know Bobby Joe's mama. Who are they? And statistically, th this is what happens. And see, we we, mm. we 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 don't believe statistics. Oh, that'll never happen to us. That'll never happen here. But why is your daughter pregnant at the age of twelve? Looking for validation. And this is why we have so much teenage pregnancy. We have young ladies that are lacking fathers in the home and they're seeking validation from the first boy or the first man that says they're good looking. Oh, baby, you, I love you. What I'm like, Tina Turner, what love got to do with it? Right. Now I'm pregnant. At a young age, I'm a baby having a baby. I don't know how to raise that child. So not 10 times out of 10, that child going to grow up and be just like me. You know, so I, I you know, I, I, I'm i waiting for the question about statistics because I, I want to talk about Oklahoma. I want to talk about Tennessee. I want to talk about the places where I visited the most because these are the places that, that need to hear, hey, there's a problem. You know I'm in Oklahoma too. Can, 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 may, may I expound on that real quick? In Oklahoma, this past year, the past six years, the number of child abuse cases have actually plummeted 50%, which is great. Um, this year, it was only 1,407 cases reported. Mm -hmm. yes. But it was, it was triple of that last year. But watch this. At the same time, the level of child maltreatment has tripled. Listen, child neglect has tripled to 13,394 cases. Oklahoma. That drove an overall of 18% increase in the number of cases of abuse, neglect in both sides in the fiscal year of 2021 
uh, was found by an analyst in Oklahoma, uh, the, the, their, their organization called Watch Found. So the question goes, this is the question I have, and I know the answer to it. Why did abuse plummet, but neglect rise? Right. What's There's it? a lack of education from people like myself that travel the country teaching on what do you do with, you know, after a traumatic incident has happened to a child, the first thing you need to do is rebuild their resilience. And that's having, you know, I, I posted it on my Facebook page earlier today and people were like, oh my God, even Mike was like, wow. So you, you, you rebuild resilience in a child. You rebuild their resilience. <clears throat> How do I rebuild resilience in a child? You, the first thing is support from parents, friends, family, schools in the community. The community has a big part to play in this, okay? Secondly, we need resources that help buffer negative consequences in the daily life of a child yes. after abuse has happened. Yes. Number three, that child has to feel safe at home, at school, and in their community. Yes. Number four, having a high self-esteem and overall positive sense of self-worth. Yes. Because that child already feels like I've been abused, so I'm not worth anything. Yes. You understand? Number five, we need to possess a sense of self-efficiency, a child's belief that he or she can be successful in different areas of their life. This is how we rebuild, we enhance resilience after traumatic events has happened in children. Number The last one is having a sense of meaning in one's life, which may include spiritual or cultural beliefs, connection with others, or goals and dreams. I had no dreams after I was abused. No. I had no dreams. I didn't think I was worth anything. No. And so someone, someone had to help me rebuild my resilience. Right. You know, so there, there, there are so many different kinds of trauma. You know, me, Mike, Mike and I were talking a little while ago. I said, Mike, do you know about the common trauma responses? And these are some of the warning signs that trauma is happening at home. He said, no. He said, what are they? Loss of control. Temper tantrums. Outbursts. Being too sensitive. Defiance. Verbal and physical aggression. When a child zones out and they stare into outer space. When a child ignores you. When a child is not listening. When a child is super nervous. When a child is lazy. When a child detaches itself from reality, when a child says, I'm sick all the time, manipulation and other difficult behaviors, these are common, these are common, common, common trauma responses that should throw off warning signs that the child is being abused. Yet they call it a bad child. Exactly. Exactly. And these are statistical trauma responses. And if we can get this in our heads, like, okay, this, this, you know, my wife, let's use my wife for an example. After I wrote the book and I told my wife about some of the responses, she says, oh my God, I missed it. I'm like, what do you mean? She said, I've seen about seven of these warning signs in a kid and I told their parent that they were ADHD. You know, it's education. She didn't know. And she said, oh, my God, I missed it. And most of her teachers in her school, she's got about 90 teachers. All of them bought my book. And they actually took it to the principal. was like, we need this book to be adapted. 80% of those teachers saw these signs in kids, and they said, oh, my God, we missed it. Wow. Yeah, when you don't know, you don't know. And if you getting the word out, by getting the word out, then people will know. And when you know better, you should do, do better. better. Right. You should do better. So Douglas, thank you for sharing. Like this is a lot and it's going to be amazing. We're going to do a part two live on IG um, where people can hear it firsthand right now. Um, I want to continue to push the book. Um, there's so much more to talk about. So much more to talk about. 
Um, I'm very sensitive person. So I got a little, but you know what? I care about the key. I care about people. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and I don't, and anyway, that's my soapbox. And then also um, we're going to be, um, you guys, we're going to have this interview on the website, on a, on dual websites, um, the yeah. book. We're just going to push this to the core. Can't wait till the mo movie is up and in production, yes, getting ready to get that together. I want to thank Mike for bringing us and connecting us. Like, yes. it's crazy how Dorez and Willie were here and never had wow. a you guys were connected, you know, yes. just all this little family thing going on. I'm yes. And um, I wish you the best. Like, we will Thank be you. following you. We will be supporting you in every way that we can. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And so before we get out of here, go ahead and tell the people, first of all, how they can find your book okay. on every platform and okay. tell them how they can contact you. Okay, great deal. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Douglas E. Hobson. Uh, you can find my book on Amazon.com or you can go to my website, www.theuntoldsecret.org. If you want an autographed copy of the book, go to www.theuntoldsecret.org. We have plenty of merchandise there. Um, we are actually in the process of putting together a national book tour. Mike is uh, my manager who you can contact um, for any bookings or anything like that. You can contact Mr. Mike Waller. Um, you can reach us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash the Untold Secret Ministries. You can follow us on Instagram at the T-H-E underscore Untold Secret. Uh, you can follow us there. We have so many things uh, in store. Uh, there are many, some guest appearances are going to be on my book tour. Um, I can't say who they are right now, but I'm going to have some special guest appearances on the book tour. Um, our movie, The Untold Secret, that's not the name of the movie, but uh, produced by Mr. Two-Time Academy Award winner Willie D. Burton and Ms. Doris Douglas. Uh, we're getting ready to start shopping and we're looking for investors also for the movie. Uh, and The Untold Secret is looking for sponsors. If you want to if you want to partner with The Untold Secret and say, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Mike, listen, I want to help you take this, this, this word nationally. Uh, you can go on our website again and donate and become a sponsor. We do have sponsorship packages available for you. Uh, you're gonna, every purchase of every book, every t-shirt does not go to me. It goes to my organization and we do have a 501c3 nonprofit organization called Life After the Abuse. Wow. Where do we, where do we go from here? So you purchase in a book, you purchase in a t-shirt, all those proceeds go to Life After the Abuse, which helped me further, edu further, further my education and educating others on the silent epidemic of child abuse and child molestation. Uh, so um, Mike is, you can email Mike at two, the number two entertainment group at gmail.com uh, for tour dates, special um, requests as far as interviews. Uh, you can reach out to my publicist who is Miss jo um, Jackie Bush. You can reach her on Instagram at, at the at sign GJJPR. You can reach her there. Uh, Mike Waller on Instagram is at Mike, Mike Waller one, I believe it is. Uh, so you can reach out to those great people there if you want to book me for an interview. Uh, get to know more about the Untold Secret. Have me come to your church, your, your corporate function, um, your school, whatever have you. We're, we are more than happy to share this message with the nation. Wow. Thank you so much, Douglas. Thank you, Jackie B. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Ms. Dorez and Willie, everybody for yes. being a part of this project because it's very important. And our kids are our future and they cannot have a good life if they're not getting the help that they need. And we're not talking about shoving medicine down their face. We're talking about right. the, the get to the bulk of the problem. What is the, yes. what's the base of the problem and begin to build that child back up to be a viable citizen in this, in this United States, in this world. So again, y'all, thank you so much. Part two, you guys, on IG Live. We'll stay tuned for the date and time on that. Um, it's just great to be in your presence, Douglas. Thank you so you much. You as well. Thank you. you guys, we're going to get out of here for now. Remember to respect yourself and respect each other. God bless. Mm -hmm.